Hello, my name is Niall Burke from Imperial College London, and I'm going to briefly discuss our new paper published in Brain Communications titled Traumatic Brain Injury, a Comparison of Diffusion and Volumetric Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI, is a devastating event that can happen to anyone, and this has long-term implications on normal cognitive and social functioning. There are a range of mechanisms that may lead to varying pathology, including direct impact or penetrating injuries resulting in focal lesions. Or alternatively, acceleration or deacceleration forces, such as those resulting from road traffic accidents, may lead to traumatic microhemorrhages or diffuse axonal injury. With advancing imaging methods, we can investigate in further detail the subtle impairment to white matter structure in TBI patients that may not be obvious on conventional structural scans. Diffusion tensor imaging has allowed us to produce an in vivo measure of white matter structure. With the advent of multi-shell diffusion imaging, we can acquire multiple diffusion estimates within a single scan. This provides more information that can be used within more sophisticated diffusion models. One such model is the Neuroidensity and Orientation Dispersion Framework. This is a three compartment model that separates out diffusion estimates. In one compartment, we have restricted diffusion um, and we refer to this as neurodensity index, and it's thought to be associated with the intracellular space. In the second compartment, there's hindered diffusion, and this is measured with orientation dispersion index, and it's thought to relate to the extracellular space. In a third separate compartment, we look at uh, Brownian motion or random diffusion, and this is thought to be associated with CSF. We measure, in our, we, we measure this in our TBI patients and healthy controls alongside additional measures of brain volume. As expected, reductions of FA were seen in the patient group alongside lower grey and white matter volume. Lower neurodensity index was also seen with an increase in orientation dispersion index. These effects were widespread across the white matter, with sp spatial variation seen across the metrics. Differences in white matter estimates were also explored in relation to cognitive function. While the largest effect sizes were seen for group, between, for group differences were seen for um, the grey and white matter volume, these were non-specific in relation to cognitive performance. However, we did see relationships between the diffusion estimates and cognitive performance. For example, slower processing speed was associated with a reduced reduction in neurodensity index seen quite widespread throughout the white matter. Um, this reduction in processing speed was also seen with an increase in mean diffusivity of the corticospinal tracts. We also saw reduced performance in a delayed memory recall task associated with a widespread increase in mean diffusivity and a reduction in uh, fractional anisotropy or FA. In a supplementary analysis, we found a strong correlation in the DTI estimates for both single and multi-shell scanning protocols in the same cohort of patients and controls. This work indicates the value of advancing imaging methods and the analysis and potential cl clinical utility for assessing brain behavior relationships Further work is required to undercover the neurobiological relationship of these measures and how they can be used to predict outcome and guide treatments. For more information, please see the manuscript in Brain Communications. Thank you.